Every allegedly. few years, a different version of the predator myth surfaces. Black helicopters, a satanic cult, or a sinister clown hunting down kids. The stories never pan out, but now, with the help of social media and the mayor of Baltimore, a similarly ridiculous rumor got new life. Baltimore, a city the size of Boston, has already seen 300 murders this year. So the mayor is taking no chances. We get reports of somebody in a white van um, trying to snatch up young girls uh, for human trafficking and for selling body parts. Asked where those reports came from, Mayor Jack Young said... It's all over Facebook. CNN reports the rumor about white vans is spreading fear across America. Never mind, there is not a single actual reported incident. Facebook is alerting readers that the posts are false. Still, that's not stopping some members of the media from scaring the hell out of people. 11 News reporter Vanessa Herring is live at City Hall with the disturbing details. What's more disturbing is that stories like these get life from the very people who should be debunking them. Clowns are reportedly terrorizing a town in South Carolina. Not. And who can forget this local clown story from a few years back? This video quickly going viral as the clown standing outside Geisler's supermarket chased a person in their car. No. Nope. It didn't. It was a prank, part of the New England scare fest. Then again, what do you expect from news organizations that promote hoaxes? A number of people reporting seeing a spirit at the grocery store roaming the aisles. And she's driving a white van. <laughs> okay, so every time I do, I mention this ghost story or something, John Keller was admonishing me last time. Oh, it's just a lot of fun and it's a lot of fun. Maybe the ghost one is a lot of fun, but these other things are not, and they are not funny. And the idea that any news organization, Boston Globe had that stupid ghost thing on the front page of the metro section. It's just irresponsible, as if there's some validity to it. And, you know, you know, the, and that's what happens here. You know, it's, I find it shocking, frankly, that the mayor did not first check with the police department. Yes. Yes. That could yes. not happen here. He would lose his job. Mm. I mean, people would be outraged. But, and here he, he's got 300 murders on his hand and he's floating some stupid rumor about people driving around in you know, white vans. I mean, that, that's why it's not funny. You, know, I don't, you, know, you, you can have fun with a couple of these stories around Halloween and all that, but that's what happens. And then they just take on a new life. Outrage is clicky and fear is clicky. People read a story if they think it's something that will affect them, and if it's playing on a fear. I mean, notice the image that that last news report used, the hands tied together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a black and white photo, yeah. but those were awful pale hands, and mm -hmm. you get to this this feeling of you need to protect these innocent young By the way, they already knew it was girls. a hoax when they put that graphic yep. up there. But it, it preys, it, it hits your, like, on a really basic level, you need to protect your children, mm -hmm. you need to protect your daughters, yeah. and that's why people are clicking through. Um, whether it's true or not, they want to check for themselves. And I think I agree with you. It's irresponsible to keep giving these stories validity without saying, like, this, is, this isn't happening. Yeah. We need to debunk this. Right off the bat. Mm -hmm. yeah. at the, debunk the debunking is, I think, the thing we have to look at because the stories are going to be out there, and it's up to the news media to crack down on them. The problem is that even debunking, in a way, advances the rumor. Right. It's a very difficult situation if you're an editor or, or handling, handling a story like that. I just don't know where you go with that, except to, uh, you, I think you have to have kind of a regular fact check kind of arrangement where, where you always go at your publication, sort of like your own local Snopes. I'm a big Snopes fan. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and, and you can pretty much rely on them. They did a pretty good job with the creepy clowns yeah. and, and all of this. So <laughs> I think that maybe is the only answer is for, uh, to have a regular feature, maybe every Friday or Snopes. something like that. <laughs> you know, um, let's talk about the role of Facebook for a moment. Yes, they've said this is fake and they're trying to get the word out that it's fake. But at the same time, we know that the way their algorithm works is that the more you engage with crap like this, the more you see of it. And so that ends up producing a sense of panic and fear all by itself. That said, I have to say, how could you be so stupid as to believe something like this? Out there. And as you said, Emily, how on earth does the mayor of Baltimore put something like this out? I saw it on Facebook without checking with the police chief. That makes no sense whatsoever. So I, I do think that Facebook, the news media, do deserve some blame here. But I also think individuals have to take some responsibility for themselves as well. 
All of that is true, but what happens is you didn't catch it the first time. You're your average person. You didn't, nobody's monitoring this stuff like we are. You didn't catch it the second time. The third time, you're like, what? What? They've been talking about, where have I been? The white van? I don't know anything about it. And nobody probably in that story at the top, to your point, says, this has been debunked by the police chief. This is not true. If you have heard, it's, it's, actually the story should be, if you have heard this, this is not true. Now, why do people uh, respond to this particular story? Because human trafficking is really real. Mm -hmm. And because we are now more aware of it, thanks to some excellent reporting by a number of people. So folks know that it happens. It's because kids have been snatched off the front porch of their parents while the parents were sitting there. I mean, so stuff has happened. So it becomes increasingly more important that you begin with the documentation that debunks from the beginning and say, you know this is going around, and to your point, it doesn't help because it just drives it further, but I need for you to know that the Baltimore police, in this instance, off have the top. Off yeah, the instead top. of saying, the here are the disturbing details. Right. By the way, one of the local stations did do, um, on, on that whole thing about being snatched, they said, actually, the way this really works with human trafficking, and it's, it's more, you know, you're going to be you're going to be luring and getting the confidence of a child. It's not usually this kind of just snatch and grab. I mean, the whole thing is is so ridiculous. It's 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 infuriating. If it's me, really getting around that much, you say this is a story about a hoax, right? And that's how that's you start right. it. That's right. And not true, it. Colin. Yeah. And every, but you have to do it every time. <laughs> yes. You do because the consistency I, is key. I can just think about other stories that don't have to do with something like this. Where mm -hmm. by the time I get to it. I'm like, well, why did that happen? Well, they told me in the first article, but they didn't repeat it in the third, mm. so I don't know. Well, what should they do about you ghost know? stories? Say, by the way, folks, there's you know. no such thing as ghosts. However, I mean, <laughs> here's a fun story that has no basis in fact, but you might find it amusing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There you dot, go. dot, dot, yeah. There you go. You know, right. That wasn't hard. And on top of the, the instances you, measure, mm. you, you mentioned, Callie, that, that where people really have something to be concerned about, then you've got the video games and you've got the movies, yes. and we haven't even mentioned that, yeah. but there's just this terrible influx of these stories that Well, there's willing suspension real. of disbelief yeah. when you're at a movie or you're watching TV, but on the news, right. you shouldn't have to do that. I'm going to yeah. blame the, the crossover between information and infotainment <laughs> here. You want something that people will find entertaining and interesting, and you want people to stay with your station or read your publication, so you, there's more of this stuff out there because people are looking to be thrilled and not just informed. And I'm going to blame lack of context yeah. every single time.